Well, welcome everyone to this webinar, Easy Marketing Ideas to Help Grow Your Business. I'm Ryan White. I am a Senior Marketing Manager here at Weave. And marketing is one of my favorite things to talk about. Next to finding the best taco joint and or finding the best way to cook a recipe for street tacos, I could talk about that for hours. But the other topic I love really diving into is marketing. How do you do it on a large scale? How do you do it for small businesses? How do you dissect marketing messages? As well as how do you best craft marketing messages and find the right channel to reach your customers? Uh, a couple housekeeping items before we jump into the content. If you want to interact at all, please use the chat and the messages. We are monitoring that. Uh, there's a couple. I, I'm going to go through several different marketing ideas as well as strategies we aren't going to dive too deep into any of them, but if there's one category you really love and you would love to get deeper into it in the how-to and really step-by-step, -step, let us know because we are actually going to do additional webinars that are more topic-based uh, on these individual marketing ideas. So let us know which one you love and we'll you know, let you know on when we're going to be coming out with that webinar specifically. Another thing, if you have questions about Weave and well as its software services and what we can provide, there is a button up at the top for those that are joining live. Uh, you can request a demo. For those that are watching afterwards, you can always uh, go onto the site in which you're watching this, and then there'll be a similar button all over the web page. Uh, we'll be talking about web pages today, so you'll be able to just walk your way through it. Okay, so let's jump right into the content. I want to keep this short and sweet, but very, very full of ideas. So easy marketing ideas to help grow your business. So one of the first things we want to talk about is we, we're, we're in the digital world, and what we have seen is there has been a dramatic shift when it comes to the power and the audience bases, um, traditional versus digital. So I want to start on digital, making sure you have a strong digital foundation, then start going into some of the other areas of content like reviews and stories, get into the additional or traditional media like events and other advertising sources. And then ultimately talk about what is the most important part, not just the ideas, but really what do you want to make sure you're implementing before you implement your ideas. So let's start with the website. No, I remember back in, you know, the early nineties and 2000, your website essentially, essentially was just a big flyer. It was a flyer online that people can go and see your information, but there wasn't much interaction. It was just a place to post your information. Basically, you would interact in the same way that someone would see an ad. But we've seen that websites have become such much more dynamic. And more importantly, they have become really the main source for information that consumers and customers and patients go to when they're looking for small businesses, when they're looking for a new dentist, when they're looking for an optometrist. They need to go to the website to just validate a few of their own concerns that they are looking at. So we have to start thinking, what is the customer journey on our website. And what that means is what do we want the customer to do when they get onto our website and how do we simplify that so that they follow that customer journey? And if they're doing something differently, if you're seeing a lot of those trends on your analytics, you can say, what can we do to optimize our website to really make that journey as simple as possible? So first you got to prioritize what are our messages and how do we simplify that so that they go along the path that we think is going to be most beneficial for them. Now with that, you're going to need a lot of call to actions as well as having the opportunity to tell your story, be a little bit more individualized in how you approach uh, your customers and make it personal. And with that, the implementation of photos, customer stories, and results is going to be very beneficial. And most and foremost, as you can see by the picture here, making sure that journey is capable on mobile. We have seen that the actual change, where now over 60% of people are viewing most of their viewing websites uh, is through mobile devices and not through desktops and computers. So making sure that that customer journey, you may have created a beautiful website that's very well done and it has a wonderful journey for the customer to go from you know, landing onto your page as well as scheduling an appointment or moving forward. But if it's not optimized for mobile, it becomes a cumbersome experience. And what you'll see is a lot of mobile customers will just basically opt out. They'll, they'll stop. So let's show you a few of these examples of good websites. I, of course, deleted the name so you can't see them, but I just want to show you a few things that they do really well. So this is a website for a dental company, and specifically, they're trying to advertise services. You can see right away that you have your request appointment. Their call to action is front and center, and it actually stays with you as you scroll throughout the page. So making having that opportunity of knowing what is most important for my customer to do 
what do I want them to do? Obviously, if you're in the dental business, you want them to schedule an appointment. You want them to get, if you it's a new customer, you want them to consistently reach out to you and it makes it much easier for you to interact with them afterwards. Likewise, another great interaction piece they have is they have the live chat functionality. This is something that's becoming very popular on websites. And actually, a lot of softwares and programs are enabling this capability, whether it be you interact with them through desktop or even through some systems like we have and others, where they send a chat and it goes straight to your phone. So you can interact with them just like a regular text conversation. The idea is if you spend all this time and effort getting someone onto your website and they just simply want to talk to you, that is the best route. Think about it. If you're going into a store, if you're in a mall or a retail location, you can go in there and you can read all the product information. You can look on the back. But ultimately, if you know that there's a sales rep right there, there's someone that can help you, you're just going to raise your hand and be like, hey, I had a question about this. Can you tell me about this? The digital interaction has become so paralleled with regular retail interaction that people are now anticipating and expecting to interact with your website in some sort of way. And one of the more important things is I saw this a lot 10 years ago, but it was everyone was using the same methodology. It was to contact us and I give them a form and they can put in their email and it says, you contact us, they put in their information. Then it says, okay, we will email you shortly. Great functionality for the time. But the problem is we've moved past that. We're now to the age where that seems so passive that you're putting in all this information and then you're just sending it into the void and hoping that they contact you or more importantly, hoping that they email you in the future. Now with this chat functionality, it's much more interacted, feels much more conversational, and that is the new expectation going forward. So if you haven't gotten that type of functionality, start looking into it, especially if you want to use your website as a driver for new demand. So on this same website, when you scroll down a little bit further, then they start telling the story of their, their business and the story of their practice. And how do they do it? Through reviews. Obviously, this practice has spent a lot of time in gathering great reviews, and they have actually shown and are able to show their Facebook or Google reviews that show up on their site. Now, they're selective in what they do and show, but let the customers tell your story. You can spend a lot of time crafting your message and telling everyone who you are, but it actually is much more real and genuine when it's coming from your customers. They're telling customers telling other customers who this person really is. So if you aren't utilizing your reviews on their website, find a way to do so, especially within those first pages. We like to say above the fold, below the fold. It doesn't necessarily need to be the first thing they see above the fold, but you do want them to see that pretty quickly. And then underneath that, you see also the interaction of real patients, real results, real results. We're going to dive into this later on, but having something more than reviews is a very powerful marketing tool and they utilize it on their website. So once again, if you're looking at functionality of your website, of course, there's the, the design, the look, the feel, but let's talk about just functionality, what people are getting there for and how are they interacting with it. Making sure, one, you have a clear call to action. It needs to be easy to see and interactive and hopefully not just on one place, but throughout the website. And if you have the navigation, a sticky navigation, then that means essentially as you scroll down, that navigation stays with you. Having it within that function or within that, real estate is going to be most beneficial because as they interact with your website, they can always find a place to book an appointment or whatever that journey is that you want them to complete. So having the ability also to online schedule. If you think about nowadays, you can online schedule for pretty much everything. You can schedule your Uber ride. You can schedule appointments at restaurants. Why can't you schedule appointments uh, with your dentist, with your optometrist, with your vet? This is something that patients and customers are starting to expect and their preferences of actually scheduling an appointment online rather than having to call and call within business hours is going to be something that most customers are going to be expecting over the next five years. In fact, when you look at the people's browsing history or browsing uh, preferences, most people are browsing after work between the hours of 7 p.m. and 11, 12 midnight. Uh, these are the times that people are browsing and potentially looking at your website. But the problem is if they were to call you right then, you're not going to be able to answer. So having that online capability to schedule an appointment is going to be very important and start looking into those ways that you can implement that within your own practice. As well as online chat functionality, I talked a lot about that already. Utilizing positive customer reviews and showcasing them as well as customer stories. And then what type of personalization can you add to your website? How can you make this customer 
look like they're looking more than just an informational piece of content, which is your website. How do you show photos or videos of who works at your staff, a little of the stories and background about them so they can get to know you and kind of get that feel for you before they come in. And then if you also use your website as something for your existing customers, point them to useful resources. I know a lot of dental companies that use whitening as one of the main things that they push and they sell. And then on their websites, they have useful resources about whitening um, as well as information on how to keep your teeth clean, et cetera. So having these resources that people can go to and go back to is also very beneficial, not only for the ranking purposes, but for giving your customers the right journey and getting them what they want. So let's talk about the next part. So you've got your website up and running. You're very confident in its ability to capture traffic. People that come there are interacting with it and they're scheduling appointments. So once you feel very confident in that area or at least competent enough to try it, that's when paid ads become really beneficial. Now, today we're this is a subject we can spend hours on. I'm going to spend about five minutes on it, but I'm going to talk about one area specifically, optimizing your paid ads so you don't waste money. So you decrease that wasted spend. So that is going to be in four areas. One, you got to be very specific in your keywords and your targeting. So making sure you're using the right keywords and you're targeting the right audience. And then your paid ads themselves, having strong head headlines, taking up a lot of real estate by using ad extensions and having that call to action be clear. So what does that look like? Well, first of all, Google is one of the best places to do paid advertising. And a lot of platforms, you also can do it on Microsoft and Bing, et cetera. But Google is a business. They want to get money as well as help you find customers. And by default, they're going to do what's best for Google. And if you're setting up a paid advertising campaign, what you'll notice is that in your targeting, they're going to say when you first click on it, the default will be all countries and territories. So if you're running an advertisement on cleaning, you know, or on trying to get a more people, or let's say if you're a veterinary trying to get uh, more new customers coming, more new clients coming in with their pets, what, you're doing is if you run that paid ad and you're not specific on geographically where you are, they're going to start advertising that everywhere. All countries, all territories. So make sure the very first minimum, the first thing you do is you go in and you enter a location. You can enter a city, you can enter a state, a city, and I would even go into zip codes. You can get very granular and the more granular you are, the less money you're going to spend on audiences and traffic that you know it's not going to be relevant. For example, if you start spending just within a city, obviously there's lots of people within a city that'd be like, ooh, that place is too far away from my home. I'm not going to go to that business. It's not local. So being very specific in how you want to target and the audiences that you're going to target will keep you from spending a lot of money on paid ads that don't convert. So we talked about how not to spend money on paid ads that don't convert. Let's look at some of the ways to help your paid ads convert a little bit better. And one is obviously ranking where it is on the website or where it is in the search. That is something that is unfortunately proprietary through Google. And they're not going to tell you exactly how to get to that number one spot, but it will be based on several factors. But the other thing you can do is make your ad bigger. Now, how do you make your ad bigger with paid ads? You use ad extensions. Ad extensions essentially add more real estate for your paid ad. You see this example right in front of you. This is for a hearing center in Orem. What it is is for most ads, you would just see that top part, hearing center in Orem, hearing tests in Orem, and then the blurb underneath it. But what they did is they linked their other specific parts of their website to different parts of their ad copy. And by doing that, they're able to make these little sub headlines, our services, free hearing guides, schedule your free hear test or your free test and what to expect. You've essentially given Google your main website that you want the ad to go to, but other options that they can navigate to with copy underneath that. By doing that, you're making your ad much larger and you're giving the audience and the clients and traffic the opportunity to interact with different web pages or different parts of your website. So the old adage is true, bigger is better. And in this case, having a bigger ad is better. It has more chance to convert because you're giving them more ability to interact with you. I mean, when you think about it, it's very, an odd philosophical thought is what is, why do people scroll and not scroll? And the term that scrolling is actually effort is real. 
it seems very minimal effort. You're just moving your finger and that's all. But that is mental capacity of you scrolling through Google search pages, trying to find what you're looking for. That is work and that is effort. So the bigger your ad is and they can able to find what they want to find quicker, they spend less effort and they're more likely to click on your specific ad. So let's show another one that I really like. This is one with a company, a dental company. If you look at the very headline, um, I blacked out the name, but it says blank modern dentistry, cleaning exam and more from $59. So you can tell right away from this ad what they want their what they want the traffic to do, what they want that journey to be. They're trying to advertise very quickly the multiple services they offer and a price point. So they're trying to bring in that specific type of traffic. And then they use some ad extensions below that, accepted insurance plans and our services. And then underneath that, you see just a regular ad that's sponsored for dental care services. And with that ad, it's just much smaller. So once again, using ad extensions in your paid display is going to give you better results because you're getting more real estate. And as you can see, real estate is king. Okay, so one of the things about paid ads is it is very unique traffic because these are people that are looking for services. These are people typing in on their phone or their uh, desktop services they're looking for or things they're wondering about. They are looking for something. On the flip side, there's also another paid channel you can use, and that is paid social media ads. The difference here is very pivotal. You are no longer trying to provide something that someone's looking for. You are interrupting your audience during their browsing behavior. You are trying to stop them from doing what they're doing at the, some point, interrupt them, distract them in order to interact now, interact now with your website, your offer, et cetera. So when you have that distinction in mind, it, your ads are going to look very different. So you want to be creative, you want to be engaging, and you want to be simple. Fortunately, all these platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, you can use a little bit, but I would doubt that there's a really relevant audience out there for you, uh, those businesses. But if you use these, they're all very visual. And so likewise, with your ads, you are interrupting the audience. So make sure if you're interrupting them, it's with something good. And with that, you want to make sure you have great imagery. Imagery is really king. Videos work really well on social media for advertisements and paid display. Uh, making sure it's engaging. That is something that if someone is browsing and scrolling through, they're going to stop. Now, this is where advertising and using that creativity really allows you to explore and be fun and dive into your office. Now, the important part is it's not just all visual. Now, we would love to say a great picture would convert everything, but you also need to have short and to-the-point copy. Be very simple up top. Don't make them read a whole novel just to get to your ad. And make sure they have a clear call to action. Underneath the ad, in the ad, above it, being able to say book now, book your appointment, schedule your appointment, read this article, learn more, watch this customer story. Whatever your call to action is, make sure it's really easy to see and that people can interact with it. Once again, you're interrupting people from their regular browsing activities. They may be just relaxing for the day, just scrolling through their friends' feeds, and then your ad shows up. If you have a compelling ad with something that is relevant to them, then that is gonna be most important. Now, likewise with Facebook, Instagram, all those areas, you need to be smart in your targeting, and we can do this in a whole nother section on how to target the right customers, but just know creatively, you need to have something good. You need to have a fun, engaging ad. So we talked a little about those digital strategies. This is where we start talking about more of what are the easy marketing ideas. Those take a little bit more expertise and a little bit more practice. But let's start talking about what are some easy steps you can implement immediately. And that is your reviews and stories. The power of your reviews is just exponential. So use the power of your reviews, which is really your patient's voice in your marketing. So in order to do that, first and foremost, you have to get into some habits. One, Ask everyone for review. Ask every patient, every client, every person that comes in for review, unless you know specifically they had a bad experience. But even then, you probably want to ask them for a review because they're going to give it and you're going to see exactly what went wrong. And then you have that ability to, one, learn and grow from that opportunity. And two, if that, if that review shows up online, you can also respond to it and people can see your customer service in responding to a negative experience. So, once you have those positive reviews, you want to turn them into something more than a review. We've already talked about using them on your website and your social, but what else can you do with them? And then lastly, you want to develop referral programs. So if you already are asking people for reviews, now in the next step, they give positive reviews. You start finding ways to incentivize people to give you actually business, to find new people that are going to help you. Oh, 
So when we talk about reviews, there's three things to always keep in mind. They're trusted as much as personal recommendations, which is crazy. About 20 years ago, I wouldn't have made that statement, but now I can confidently make that statement that reviews are trusted as much as personal recommendations because people are going to always look at a business and look at the reviews and do that as a gauge test. Kind of, did I get the right information about this business? Let me take a quick look at the good reviews and they may even look at the bad reviews just to see how you respond to negative situations. So the first three things they're going to look for are rating, What's your overall rating? That one's really obvious, and that's what people all focus on. Now, the problem is you can't just solely focus on your rating. There's two other factors here. Recency, so how recent is the review? If you're looking at a review, you're like, for this, this company has you know, a good number of reviews, and you know, it's like a 4.7, but the latest review you can find is from two years ago. Immediately, that trust in that rating falls because people think, okay, are, is this the same business they were two years ago? Are they the same? Are they interacting the same way with customers? How come they don't have more recent reviews? Those questions will start to pre up. So having a good rating, having good recent reviews and continuous stream of reviews, which is why it's so important to ask for reviews so continuously. And then lastly, the quantity. So as those three work together, that's when you're starting to start getting you uh, recognized well on those review sites. So let's say you have your reviews, but you're not nearly as much as other people. The good news is going back to our paid strategy is if you don't have the most amount of natural reviews, you can pay to be at the top. You can pay to play. So if you look right here, here's an example of Zion Physical Therapy. This is New York. They only have 21 reviews. Now, granted, they have a great rating, 4.9. But if you look underneath underneath the ads, which is even goes into the second and third or the third and fourth one, those businesses, the physical therapists of New York and physical therapists of other New York, those ones have much more reviews and naturally would probably rank higher if not for the paid advertisement from the Zion and Dr. Roland. So with that, as you're building up your review strategy, as you're building up reviews themselves, know that there is the option to try to pay to get your place or get your site recognized much higher. Um, that is within your paid display op options. And then you can not only have build up more reviews because you're gathering more traffic, you can also showcase that in a unique way. So let's talk about validation for people that are looking for your business. But here's my favorite topic. And this is something I do a lot in my job is finding good reviews and then trying to get something more. So you go to that customer, they left you a great review, but let's let's turn something this review, these few sentences a testimonial about your practice into something much greater. And that's what I would call a customer story. So with that, once you have a good positive review and you have a good rapport with this customer, talk to them, get them more, ask if you can dive deep into that question. Hey, why did you say this? You know, can you expand, explain a little bit more on why you rated us five stars? Tell us a little bit about your situation. Tell us about your life. Um, these are turning these regular five sentence reviews into such a much greater. Now you can go all the way to the extreme route, which is, creating videos that are specific to that customer that really share that story in a fun, unique way. And this was two videos that I saw on a hearing aid uh, site. That's a great way to use these reviews. Or it can just be testimonial that is expanded, giving context to them. So if you're getting customers that are already giving you good reviews, reach out, ask them if you can talk to them a little bit more about their experience. Dive in, get some notes, you know, interview them a little bit, spend 20 minutes just to talk to them back and forth on, you know, things that they've loved, talk to them about how they found you, et cetera, and their story and what, what, what they think is important when they go to the dentist or when they go to the optometrist, et cetera. And as you get that, you're going to start developing this story that people are going to interact with. Why are these so important? It's because when a customer is looking on your website, they're going to look at reviews and it's kind of a gauge test on whether you are what you do what you say you do. But then they're going to look at this customer story and they're going to put themselves in the place of this customer and say, this is the experience that I am going to anticipate or I am going to expect. They're able to get that customer experience in their brain and understand this is how this practice interacts with their customers or with their patients. So customer stories are not only important just to help solidify that, but then they're great marketing tools because that's when you really see the value of your business and what is the best thing to message. One thing, of course, when you get these customer stories and reviews, you want to put it on your website, but there's also other places to put it. So if you're looking for easy marketing ideas, every great review, talk to your customers 
talk to your patient, talk to your customer and say, Hey, can I share this? And then find a way to do it. That's not too self promoting. <laughs> so we love this example. We love hearing from you. Leave us a review on Facebook or Google and let us know how we can better serve you on your journey to better hearing. And they showcase this review that they got from a customer, from a patient. Your people are going to see reviews if they're looking for them, but that's a great way to also interrupt is show people the value that you bring. So if you're looking for easy marketing ideas, look for, talk to your customers, get those reviews, see what the value they can create just from that channel alone. Okay. We're already starting to run out of time. So we're going to go a little bit quicker here. So traditional media. So the reason why we focused on digital media is because that has become so much more prevalent and really demand generating in our generation right now. Now, what we want to take a look at is don't ignore the other methods. So traditional media, direct mail, local events and sponsorships, targeted ads. These are things that you can and should interact with. The difference between them is really what I like to call um, attribution. With digital, you can see attribution very easily because you can track that. You can track how many people are clicking on your ad, getting to your website, booking an appointment. Social media, you can track how many views it sees and then people that are clicking and engaging. Traditional media, this is where it gets a little bit harder to track. And so it's worth it to spend money and it's very important, but know that it is going to be a little bit harder to track. So try to find ways to implement that tracking capability. So with traditional media, making sure that you're three things. One, you want to keep it simple, clear, and different. It can be more expensive. It can have great long-term results. And that's one of the reasons never ignore traditional media because the long-term benefits and the brand building equity, uh, the brand equity building that you're doing is going to pay dividends in the future. But you need to likewise, you're interrupting people. So you want to keep it simple, short, focus on the values that people are looking for. Keep it clear, have your offer compelling and easy to read. They don't need to look for it on the ad. They don't want to read a paragraph. Ads are, should be able to at, read and analyze within three seconds. And then different, you want to keep it memorable and interesting. And the best way to do that is find a unique way to, uh, this is where you get to pull out that creative brain and find a unique way to push your office in different methodologies. Okay, that is a subject I can go into in deeply. But before we do, I want to really dive into this. Why are, what's so important about spending money with marketing or finding unique ways that you don't have to spend money with marketing? You, you're going to spend a lot of effort doing this. A way to try to grow your business requires effort. What you want to do is figure out where is that effort best spent? So track your spend and your traffic. So being able to measure your efforts through those digital metrics, we paid spends, you can measure clicks and engagements and more importantly, conversions. How many people are booking appointments that click on your ad? Um, how many people are jumping over to your website? How many people watch the full video on social media? Being able to track these, give you an inner, give you an idea of what people are interested in and what they aren't, as well as are they interested in it, but for the wrong reasons. Is it really getting them, progressing them on that customer journey or are they just clicking on it then jumping away? The other part is, when it comes to media, both in digital and traditional, you can use separate marketing phone numbers. A lot of people see ads and instead of interacting with digitally, sometimes they'll just go ahead and call, especially if you have your number listed. If you're doing Google paid ads, I would highly suggest always have your address and your phone number because people may just go ahead and call. And if you're doing that, it's really easy to get a free marketing phone number. And that is just a number that routes to your regular office number. But now you can just see all the people that input that specific number and you can track at the success of a marketing campaign, whether you're putting that on a digital ad or if you're at a local movie theater and you have your ad just right before the movie or my movie starts, having a unique phone number that people can interact with will help you see where the traffic is coming from and what, from what campaign and what messages are working. And then making sure that you are interacting with those calls and missed calls. The reason why having that unique phone number is so important because you can also see, did you miss a call? Was it after hours? Did you accept that call? What happened? And then ask about their journey. You Once you customers come to you and new customers, especially ask them, how did they get to you? You know, what did you see? Did you see an advertisement? Did you hear from a friend, et cetera? Ask them about their journey, get some of that qualitative data that lets you know how they get interact with you. I have right here on the right uh, a case study we did with a customer that was absolutely fantastic. He's a brilliant marketer, but he was also smart to realize before I spend a lot of money on marketing, which he kind of was at that moment, how what can I take a step back and making sure it's going to be useful? 
So in this case study, repairing holes within your marketing strategy, he used these phone call metrics to solve his marketing problem. And what it was is he realized he's spending lots of money. He was spending money on events, on sponsorships. He had ads and direct mails and all these different things that consultants told him to do. The problem was he wasn't seeing the demand that he was promised. And he started to say, why is that? Is it the marketing message? Is it the channel? And then he realized something. He was getting phone calls and he was getting a lot of traffic, but in his office, those phone calls were not being answered or they're being answered at a bad time, et cetera. They were busy. And he realized he had to repair some in-office processes specifically with these campaigns before he started spending more money on marketing. So how the reason why this is such a compelling story is if he didn't have that insight into where that traffic is coming from and where it's going, he would just keep spending marketing dollars and just hoping. Is a term we use as market is called spray and pray, which is you essentially just spray your message out there and just pray that someone comes. That's not, we're getting past those days. We're moving on to an area where we can actually see what is working, what is effective, what is not. So before you spend a lot of money on a brand new campaign, making sure just take a step back and say, where is this traffic going from? Can I track it? And can I make sure I'm optimizing it? Okay. That was a lot within 30 minutes. In fact, I already went over a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. But the biggest important things I want to leverage with, there are lots of ways to market your business and no one way is going to be the silver bullet for every person and every practice and every business. That's why it's important to look at several different ideas, utilize a lot of different ideas, and then try them all out. Try them, optimize them, track them, see what's working for you. And ultimately try to find ones that are free and useful like reviews and leveraging the customer's voice in a free and unique way. But then also once you find the message that works, that's when you can start amping it up and spending more money and really start driving traffic and being uh, having demands on what do I expect from this traffic and having floors and limits of what you want to see is going to be important because then you can take a look at your campaign and you're not just wasting money every month. You're actually saying, I expect to get this. Now, what do I need to do to get that? Do I need to change my strategy? Do I need to change the message? Or is it something to do with the audience and targeting? So lots of ideas. I hope you take from this. We're going to go into separately in future webinars about the uh, capability of each of those ideas and how to really step-by-step -step move through them. But I hope you got inspired today. As you can tell, I can drag on and on about marketing, but feel free to throw anything in the chat for questions. I did see one question in here. <clears throat> it says, what have you seen has been the best use and capability of social media for advertising services? Very good question. This will all ultimately depend on one, where is your market? Who is your market? And how are you trying to reach them? One big thing to point out is Facebook has been usually been the king on social media, but you're starting to see this is much older demographic than what it used to be, you know, several years ago. The people that are on Facebook tend to be a much higher demographic age. So if you're going after older patients, uh, specifically above 30, et cetera, Facebook is a great place to start. Instagram, it starts going lower, but TikTok is one of the newer areas. I haven't done too many campaigns on TikTok, done a number of them, but they're harder to track. And so I'm trying to find better ways to use them in my own marketing to track them. But the important part is if you have free ways to do it, start uh, doing it, <laughs> start trying it out, but know who the audience is before you just start blasting out messages. Know who you want to see this and trying to use smart targeting and audience filter systems in Facebook. They're very advanced. You can go into people's interests. You can go into job titles, et cetera. You can do all sorts of targeting to make sure your ad is gained in front of the right audience without you wasting too much spend. But what I would do is always do it and watch closely to see if your interactions, if you don't see the interaction you want, tweak it. Tweak the message, tweak the audience, seeing if you can broadcast it maybe at different times, different opportunities. Okay. Uh, one other question about paid ads. So it looks like it says, how do you get to the top of paid ads? Okay. <laughs> That's a hard question. Uh, Google will always put the paid ads on top based on a couple of things. They call it their ad rating as well as the what they think is going to be the best, matching the best ad with the the right search. And so there's going to be people that use broad keywords, pretty much any type of keyword. But the problem is Google also wants to make sure that they're matching up the right customer with the right business. And so if you have an ad that's not at all relevant or they feel like your, your ad is not relevant to the thing that they're looking for, it's going to typically 
be lower. So that's why it's important to be very specific in your keywords, what you're targeting, as well as being very specific geographically. Google uses those geographic tags very well. And they say, if this person is in the Salt Lake area or this person's in the Denver area, it's going to prioritize an ad that is very specifically targeted to Denver rather than one that's just broadly targeted to the whole U.S. It's going to have higher weight because they feel like they're creating a better services to that specific customer, especially if they're looking for local services. So no secret sauce on this one. We'll have to go on to that question. will be the best answered in a big, long webinar. But just know that be specific in your targeting, be specific in your keywords that you're using. Okay. I think that's all I have for the questions. So once again, thank you for everyone joining. If you have questions about how to improve your marketing, um, stay tuned for future webinars. If you have questions on functionality of software that can help you improve your trackability, specifically with phone calls. I, I mentioned that office that utilized those phone call metrics to make sure that they were answering the phones correctly and or they weren't being missed. Uh, take a look at those case studies. Uh, I will drop that in the same website, which you see these if you're viewing this on demand. All right. Thank you very much and enjoy. Have, have fun marketing. It's one of my favorite things to do. Enjoy it.